recording. Angry. So mm, the idea of the love of the darkness and the love of the light and the love of the, of the vibrational frequencies in between. Well, this is what we came here on earth to experience in the third dimensional reality. We get to choose what we experience, whether it is light or dark. In the darkness, there is also love. It's the love of self, yes? And we would find pleasure in promoting ourselves and promoting our desires. We want to be on top. We want to have control over ourselves and over others. And that may be seen by some as being darkness. And then you have the light. You have the light vibration of love of self and others and the love of humanity and helping others. We choose to see the good in people. We choose to allow people to live their lives as they would wish to experience it as best as possible. So you have these two extreme vibrations of energy. And we can go into the darkest of the dark. And that's basically like murder or that's basically being a king or dictator over people. Uh, and many other facets of what we consider to be darkness and then you have light people who like to share their energies with others bring people in help people feed them clothe them shelter them even at the expense of themselves so who's to say which one is correct it is all experience, yes. It is all the choice of that energetic being, that perception in that lifetime. And without that perception in that lifetime, you wouldn't have the experience to use in another, where you can understand whether you want to go left or you want to go right. Now, Leela, I point this out because you brought up the topic. How do you feel about that? Here, I, I will tell you. I am going to tell you all. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, the suffering is wonderful. What, when we are in the suffering in the 3D and the Orion War for millions of years. I mean, that is tremendous suffering what we all went through in Atlantis and whatever and whatever. And everything what you say is just experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that the suffering, once we, and for us it's real, whatever dimension we go, we are going through when we go to concentration camps, slavery, uh, torture it is a real thing but in the true aspect of the absolute truth there is no suffering that mm -hmm. is a just illusion so that is tremendous uh, improvement in the self realization in the soul when the soul allowed the suffering the pain, the horrible thing, and then go through on a real level and came out and would say, well, that was just illusion because everything exists out of love and light. So I would say even if suffering is, we, we go to the dentist, we do feel it, you know what I mean? 
It's mm-hmm. not an illusion. So that is a small level of pain. We can transcend any suffering into our essence of life, and that's love. And I, I think that's why we, as on soul level, allow it. And we don't mind because we do not identify it us yes. on soul level ever with slavery, with suffering, with abuse, because on soul level, on our true identity and existence, we are godly and we are pure and we are powerful. Yes. So I would say, yes, it is experience, but it's a pain in the Maria. Yes. <laughs> Pain in the butt. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really mind boggling to understand this concept in our third dimensional reality because we see so much pain and we see so much pleasure. We see the extremes every day. And we say that is horrible. And we judge it for what it is. And yes, we learn to judge. We learn to say that is a bad thing and you shouldn't do that. And we judge the people based upon what they do. But if you look at it, we've all been the victim and the victor. We've all been the slave and the master. We've all been many different extremes. In many different lifetimes, even some in some occasions in the same lifetime. So, what is the truth of the heart in that in that moment? What is the truth? It's about love. Whether it's about the self, love of the self, or the love of the others, it's what you choose to experience in that moment. And for some, that is a very harsh concept to understand. I think if we will stay on the level of Native Americans or Aborigines in Australia, if we were not controlled and chipped and raped on our soul level by uh, the you know Anunnakis and whoever. Uh, it was abusing us. They are. They they created the religions. They created the judgment. Because when you are Native American, how they lived on the uh, on the beginning on the higher pure level, I don't think they learned the judgment from the nature. I think that the judgment comes from the control. It does. Because yeah. nature does not judge, nature right. allows and nature loves. Exactly. So if, if a flower wants to grow out of concrete, nature allows for that to happen. Exactly. And that's does why. Not judge which choice you make and how hard it is for you to make that choice. Right. Right. That's why we have to be, we humans have to come to the conclusion that we are put in this horrible box limitations and judgment by others and that's why we uh, just uh, didn't develop that 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 greatly you know that's why native americans are not here that's why aborigines are not uh, 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 successful uh, well, the Native just, Americans are here. They're still here. There's remnants. There's still tribes. Yeah, I remnants. I'm yeah. descendant of one. Um, but that energy, that understanding and awareness is still alive and well today. It's coming through everyone instead of just a group of people now. And so you have to also understand in suffering or in hardships of realities you also get this being who flowers i mean look at most of us we 
consider ourselves to be very spiritual, but our past may have been very harsh in many people's ideas of experience, right? But we still came out of that harshness and brought ourselves up and just grew out of all of it. And we're flowering now. And so who's to say one is good and one is bad when all of your experience combined have caused you to, number one, awaken, number two, learn, number three, teach, number four, experience more so you can share it with others, whether or not they're receptive, okay? So... Sometimes you may think in, in this perspective that the harshness of realities have made us beautiful people and beautiful beings. <laughs> this is a concept that I've been wrestling with for some time because I came out that of That is true. And that is true. And that is true. Because that's what we were talking before. That is the spiritual aspect of a spirit. Yes. Person conquering the illusion and, it, and finding the it, true identification, what is the spirit and what is the soul. And then you, you are going to shine once you reconnect with yourself. And that's what spirituality is. There yes. are different levels, of course, like with everything, but the the basic the main is realizing that we that we are more than the body so when every human being today would realize that the judgment comes from the wrong concepts of life and that is a government and that is a church then there will be less they will be forgiving because they will understand that is, it is, it was teach to them from the small ch children how to think and how to walk. So well, to to go. I, I want to speak out about this idea of wrong okay. concepts of life because okay. everything has a role to play. Everyone has a role to play. Even religions and government have their roles to play. Do we choose it for our futures? That's, that remains to be seen. But it all plays a role in the growth of humanity to become who it truly wants to be. So I don't like to say anything is wrong or anything is right. I see all vibrations are necessary. But in the process of, of ascending, Mm -hmm. In the process of, of became more spiritual, mm -hmm. we have to give a tool and understanding to those who doesn't have it. Yes. And they have to understand why they are thinking they are, why they are thinking the way they are thinking and mm -hmm. why they are judging wh where that comes from. For example, judgment comes from disconnecting from Gaia. So that, for example, is a tool of teaching. And it's not saying you can forever stay dark because that is a part of, or do you want to ascend to fifth dimension with, where there's love? So do we want it to allow it? Do we want it to continue or do we want it to go forward and leave behind, allowing the darkness? So that's my point. At this point in time where we are standing, where, where Gaia is moving, we should rather chase Gaia than just say, oh, I'm going to fine with the darkness and let's, uh, let's celebrate with Trump and Clintons and go to a party. <laughs> Would anybody else like to speak to this subject? <laughs> Dan or Sonia, Maya? Well, yes, I do agree with you in that aspect. 
the reconnection with the planet, with Gaia, is very necessary for our growth because as the planet grows in its own awareness and its strength and transition into the fourth dimension from the dirt, from the third, we are also doing the same. And so we cannot go backwards to where we were because the level of energy was much lower much more denser than it is now and so our vibrations are rising along with the planet and so in order to remain here to stay our concepts and awareness must must expand and grow along with it and that doesn't really allow for a lot of old energy old negative or energy that requires control over over others it doesn't allow for that because the more the energy of the planet raises your vibration raises and therefore your concepts of love and the being able to feel one's heart through your own has become greater and so if you know what the other person is feeling when you treat them in a negative way it has an effect you feel it you feel how they feel and it hurts yes. it's painful and you know, yeah and maybe and it is probably all about the choice it is mm -hmm. not about as you said right and wrong it is about we have to make a choice every day am i going to do a good thing selfless thing Oh, I'm going to mm -hmm. sell fish. Less good thing. And we have to make a choice every day. Every day we have to make a choice. So it is not about right and wrong, but still it's a choice. It's a choice. That's right. And that could be a different result. It, it would be <laughs> different results. You will feel pain instead right. of joy. Depends what you're choosing, right? Exactly. So and it is wants to feel pain every day. <laughs> We've done it already. It's time to move on. <laughs> I like how you paired the words together like it was selfish and good thing. Or like it's like those two words go together. So, Cuz I'm doing a selfish and good thing today. But selfish and not good thing. Okay. Like and then non-selfish. Wait. <laughs> non-selfish and not Good. Selfless and selfish. <laughs> there we go. I'm trying to think too much. <laughs> well, uh, there is. You are talking about a simple life, and you're referring to simple life. We are talking right now a little bit deep philosophy. How the best way to, to mm. just a philosophy, but from your perspective, what you just said, uh, doing just for me something that's acceptable that's we're not talking on that level that's not what we are but talking what you about. do every day is part of how you it's, well how th you that's what i'm saying it's fine your that's values fine. if you can if and you can live fine. according to your values that is important but if you're not living according to your values uh or if you're prevented somehow i don't know <clears throat> That's, it's an important, like you, okay, where do values come from? They come from these deep philosophies, these ideal um, ways of living. And, but you do have to live it rather than just speak it, think it. Yes, actually, no, not rather. Actually, you have to do both. Sorry, you have to um, obviously explore, feel free to explore the deepest subjects. But if you can't bring it back to your life at the end of the day, in your daily living, um, well, then maybe you just, you know, uh, explore some more, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but that's just not my problem. And I didn't uh, address that problem at all. You did. Well, it's, it's all part of living though. Yeah. Well, but I am not a philosopher. I am not a just a philosopher. So that was, mm -hmm. I don't know what, who she was talking about right now. Well, she's talking about... When, when you, you're connecting to the heart of the other 
and you're making a choice whether or not to say something or judge them based upon a circumstance. And this judgment comes every day. It comes every minute, an hour. And basically, you make the choices of what you wish to think in that moment in time. Absolutely. One allows you to progress in the light of love where you say, okay, I can understand this other being. I can, stand, I can understand their hearts. And the other, when you respond to them, if it's in a negative manner, it, you're not projecting a negative manner just to them. It projects back to you. And you feel it automatically. And so when you make that judgment call on whether to give a positive response or a negative response to another person, how are you feeling in that moment in time of your response? And you'll know automatically whether it is a good response or if it's a negative response. And you make your choice because you'll feel it. Yeah, the judgment, the judgment is always there. We all judge. Every day we make choices and we exactly. judge. Exactly. It's and just it's about the, those choices we, we choose yeah. to make with each other, with the beings I, around us, with the people around us. It's I was talking on different level of judgment, on the bigger level of judgment, not yeah. on every but day. But even on the bigger level, on the micro level, you also have the same level of judgment judgment at the macro level absolutely it's the same. experience yeah so that's what she was talking about and you're both saying the same thing truly well i know that's why i was wondering yeah so at the, <laughs> mic at the micro level you have the religion the government those who wish to attain power over others you know the dictators, that's what you have on the, the, the really, really, really like larger level, right? Yes. And what she's talking about is the level of communication with the people right in front of you and the choices you make with the people right in front of you every day. The judgments you make on them and the judgments you make on yourself. And also we were talking about selfish and selfless yes selfish or and selfless less, yeah. even uh, that judgment is another aspect but that was uh, the choice what we are doing every day yes exactly so that is, that's you know it can be judgment can be selfish can be selfless action that's what we are talking yeah yes of course so you can be selfish as in giving a negative response or a response that is uh, only loving to self instead of loving to the other, or you can give a selfless response that is loving to the both of you. Feel that out for a second. What does that feel like to you? I don't have a conflict, so I don't know. Are you trying to feel me? No, 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 no. I'm saying, what does that feel like to you? It's... The that judge that different level of communication. So I just we are talking about her. What is her communication? So let's talk her. Let's bubble should talk to you and uh, clear whatever she's thinking because I didn't get it. Her. Mm -hmm. So that's why you should uh, maybe talk to her because I don't have that conflict. Whatever she mentioned. Well, she was congratulating you. She liked the idea that you put the two words together, selfless and selfish. They sound similar, but they're quite different. It was, it was, to say. actually, it was four words. It was four words. It was, yeah. so, wait, I'll start with selfless. Selfless and good, and selfless and not so good. And then selfish and good, because it can be good for yourself, can be good for, the, for others. And selfish and not so good, because you might be doing something too selfish. <laughs> Those four words. Yes. So she saw the vibrations of those two words in four different patterns. 
That's interesting. I like that. Like I need to probably give some examples. Like what would you do? Um, selfish and good. Selfish means you're loving yourself selfishly. And no matter what, I don't know, no matter what your mother's telling you. Um, <laughs> no, mom, I'm going to do this today because I know it's good for me. I know it's going to make me happy. I know it's going to make, if I'm happy, my family's going to be happy. And in the end, you might be happy too. So I'm not going to listen to you today. I'm going to do this selfish thing that is good. <laughs> so, so that's one example. And then you can probably guess the other examples of selfish and not good. And then mm -hmm. selfless and good. Um, obviously, we know what that is, you know, loving others. Yeah, big Bible stuff and all, all of that stuff that's taught. Um, there's also selfless and not so good as in not caring for yourself and things like that. Um, yes. You know, not, yeah, doing things for others, but not really, you know, sticking your neck out, but getting your neck cut off. <laughs> no, no, cut off. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> this is what we were discussing earlier about uh, putting yourself out there and standing up for who you truly are and speaking your truth and having to cut that back simply because the next person can't understand or they will not be able to vibrate or they will become very combative with that information that you have or with that way of being that you have. Um, so in that way, you become selfless and, and cutting off your own wings, but you're actually hurting yourself because you're not standing in your own truth and you're hurting the next person because you're not allowing that person to see someone who is standing in their own truth so quite interesting that and you uh, become yourself in the process too yeah we can there are different kinds of uh thinking we can split anything in thousands of pieces, any mm -hmm. subject, or we can keep it simple. My way of thinking is to be simple as possible and to get the essence. So when somebody's tried to make a variation in splitting a hair in thousands, I am definitely going to lose the track because that's not my way of thinking so that's why i do not follow often uh what people are saying because they're going to split something and i am completely not there and this is just not a part of my uh, system of thinking so i don't even go there energetically i cannot even i cannot even go there <laughs> so <laughs> so that's what i'm saying that's why that's why Again, we can talk another subject, what is very, very deep and important, the meaning of connecting with people, how difficult it is to connect on true level, because we are so on different level and we are multidimensional and we have different experience. And in this 3D, we also different. And so that's why it's, and we have a different, way of thinking we have a different cultures so-called religions backgrounds and this and that that's why sometimes is miscommunication very easy it yes. is even people who love each other and that is not even most of them they don't understand each other at all uh, because they are connecting on uh, other levels and not really on communication soul level. So that would we can maybe would be inter interesting subject and topic to talk how difficult it is to connect with somebody on several levels. Yes, I love that because this this just showed you that intent of what Maya was saying because you saw one way of seeing the two words, the selfless and the selfish. She actually saw a very multidimensional way. She saw other vibrations of those two words. 
and know the realities and experiences of those two words. Now I have this uh, idea when, when I'm listening to people, when they speak, sometimes they can say the same word and be saying two different things at two different levels of vibrational meanings. And this is what just occurred right now. You were both saying the same things, but the vibrational meanings were entirely different. They were both of love. They were both correct. But the communication level were entirely different because from what the, one meant. Yes. And that's why uh, is so that is one a reasoning an aspect how communication has to be maybe relearn once we go to higher dimension we all have to relearn to communicate uh, uh, the communication aspect because communication and love goes really hand in hand yes. so it is important uh, going to higher dimensions that human humans with each other have to will have to go through that process yes it's true because we we are vibrational beings and the way we can understand the communication is by understanding the heart of the person even with the same word being said with two different meanings we can speak that vibration out. And as we speak it out, we use our hearts in the meantime, along with the vibration, because the vibration of the word comes from the brain. However, there's a second communication, communicative uh, energy connected to that word. And so when someone says something by Connecting the mind and the heart together, we can find the vibrational meaning that is intended to be known. Do I need to explain that? Nah, that's just all fine. Very simple. You know, the, yeah. an the another thing is what I came to my mind actually going to higher understanding we are going to develop third eye opening we are going to develop telepathy and that is going to make the trick because when we understand each other more on telepathic level then it's not really about the words it is about you kind of know who is standing in front of you more or less and rather more. And then it's not really about a disputes anymore. And that's exactly. it. Mm. That is why we need to add in the heart because the heart has the telepathy we're looking for. Well, and ascension is not we're yes. looking for as well. As ascension is not possible without the heart. Anything, anything can't grow without the heart so hard that yeah. is what it is so there's no way that you can process progress on any level without accessing the heart and that's what we can come again to the darkness and light mm -hmm. you know so hearts that's is not even need to be spoken that's level yeah that's obvious yeah. Should be. i was i was connecting to the idea of connecting logic to empathy of wow. a word in vibration. Mm. The logic comes from the brain. The empathy comes from the heart. And from that point, we can figure out what energy or word is intended. Well, um, in Greek, well, that's, that's very interesting what you just said, because in Greek, logo means God. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so logic is not necessary brain because God sits in the heart, Paramatma in Sanskrit. So uh, it is depends on the education, but I do understand from that perspective and then it's another perspective. So from my perspective is logic, it is uh, 
comes from God and definitely not from the brain. Because logic has to make sense and everything what is common sense, what sense has to be more connected to the truth than a speculation. And truth is love. So therefore, for me, logic, and according to the Greeks and others, they are connected with God and not God connected with the heart. So brain, no. But I know what you're saying because, again, that is a, that is a game of words. Logic, we, we understand in the common sense of life here what we, uh, university, 3D universities, right? Uh, they teach us logic and rationality. And yes. logic is this connection from the heart. And I know what you are saying, but that is the knowledge from 3D universities. But yeah. when, you, when the scriptures, from the scriptures, and that is from God, that is, it's actually not that way, you know? So, but that is, again, very typical that the 3D, how they twist the truth to misguide. So and that is everywhere. So I, I, I got the point. Yes. But I do understand what you're saying, but... Uh, so let's say the law, uh, a wise person, let's analyze that. Let's try to think about it all together, all of us. A wise person is what it is going to, wise person is going to be logical or is going to be chaotic, disorganized, random, disconnected. Hmm. I would say a wise person would be compassionate they would know how to use their minds and their hearts in balance exactly they will they know you see connected very oh. much so that's wisdom wisdom is learning about your environment understanding it and when i say environment i mean people places situations all of it combined and using that information to come into an understanding and a knowing of what's best for the self. That's wisdom. And also when that occurs and you have love for the self, you also have love for the next person because you cannot hate another and have love for yourself at the same time. Not in reality, not in the truth, not in the heart. It's impossible to hate another and love yourself. The hate is the judgment. The hate is the, oh, I don't like this and this and this about this person when all the time we are at the same time period, we are judging ourselves based upon the actions of the other. So- Yes, absolutely. To have wisdom is to have compassion and love for yourself and everyone around you. Well, Oh, yes. Wisdom has a lot of things because it's huge. It's not only compassion, but much, much more. But compassion is one of the ingredients of wisdom. Yes. Knowledge. Understanding. Connection. That's wisdom to me. Yes, wisdom is very rare uh, in our 3D, manifested. That's why we don't really come across often, but we, according to me, what I don't see that often, but truth, I do see much more. Re uh, truth is easy to see. Wisdom is combining a lot of aspects of the truth 
and that is a high level of understanding and that is rather rare uh, to connect to wisdom because that uh, again everybody has a different understanding and level of understandings and seeing and feeling but that's mm-hmm. how i see it for me it is a huge word not taken cheaply or easy so mm-hmm. And truth can also be relative. And everyone's truth is correct for them. According where they stand, absolutely. Exactly. That's why, as we know, Einstein was saying, everything is relative. Yes. Everything is relative. But love, love is more powerful than anything else. That's the wisdom. And that's the wisdom. Yes. Mm. Ah, my queen, you got it. (laughs) (laughs) I love these conversations. (laughs) Yeah. You see, the love, this kind of conversation comes from knowing it, already experiencing it. What you already have, you're going to seek and desire again to experience. Yes. So you love because it's already there. Because, mm-hmm. because you had this kind of uh, discussions and meditations about it. And so you are accessing something what you well know. And, and you know the wisdom and knowledge, it is energy. And once you can access that energy, it is not just words like people would say. Mm-hmm. For me, they are not. Like Baba was saying, oh, just talk and you have to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to do it and experience it every day. Exactly. But once, first you have to understand, and then you, then you can practice. But if you don't have a concept, You cannot Mm -hmm. practice. You cannot walk. So understanding and walking, it's together. And then later you're going, anybody will come to to the level of swimming in the energy of truth. And that's what the real conversation I see on higher level when the exchange of experience happening in energy form It is not about debate. It is you give me your experience of your wisdom into my soul energetically and I give it back and we experience exchange both, Mm -hmm. combine and grow. And that's for me swimming in the wisdom on energetically level is. So... That's why I also like this level of conversation because for me, it is not about exchanging words. For mm-hmm. me, it is about exchanging energies, what I feel. Yes. Otherwise, how can you say it? That's correct. You know, you cannot really uh, go deep without swimming in. Otherwise, you're going to drown very fast. <laughs> yes. So that's why, yes, the, ex- the exchanging intellectual, but again, that's not intellectual because when we listen to very advanced Arthurians or Pleiadians, these wonderful beings, we can also say they just talk. Why don't you walk? Or how do you know they are not walking already? (laughs) Listening to this wonderful experience on high level, for me, for me, it is meditation. I don't, (laughs) uh, yeah, I don't, uh, yeah. So therefore, I don't really tell them, just show me that you're walking what you're talking. I rather feel it and go there with my emotions. Yes. Would anyone else like to add anything? Maybe Dan, maybe Dan went to sleep already. 
<laughs> Dan usually has something wise to say in a rant. So I was looking to see if he has something to say. No, I don't have anything to say. You girls keep knocking yourselves out. I'm just watching. <laughs> that was wise. Yeah. <laughs> Not, I've, I've, been, I've been well trained. I know when to shut up. <laughs> no, but you know what? You have, let's say, let's, let's say something interesting, another aspect on interesting conversation. Listen to the voice of Dan. Because he has a very interesting vibration of his voice. So please talk so we can analyze a little bit more. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. No? That's deep. <laughs> I need thousands. 